version of the ICAM Winter School uh, in Sydney. Um, so it's my pleasure to introduce the first speaker. Before I do it, I just want to, to make a little comment to what Ivan said. Ivan said that I said it's a small country. I didn't mean the area, I meant the people. And the majority of this huge continent is rather empty. So if you would have time to travel around, travel around the coast so you can see people. Okay, and with that, on that note, I would like to introduce our first speaker. It's my pleasure to introduce Professor Hideo Takazo, who is from Tokyo Institute of Technology. And he's also editor of Nature Asia. Um, and he specializes, his research area is liquid crystals and, uh, and um, micro lasers uh, based on liquid crystals, as you can see from the titles of his talks. So he'll be giving two lectures today and then subsequently two on Wednesday, where he'll be further talking about um, micro lasers based on liquid crystals. Professor Stephen and good morning everybody. Um, I'm Akizora from Tokyo Tech. Um, actually this is uh, my first trip to Australia, so I'm a little bit excited about uh, this country. Um, actually uh, yesterday I arrived here in the morning um, since the weather was so nice, so I had a little time to see a city. It's very, very beautiful. Yeah, I, I enjoy it. Well, um, the topics today is uh, liquid crystal micro lasers. And um, as you know, I will give you uh, four lectures, uh, including two lectures today. Um, today I'm going to talk the uh, introduction uh, photonic effect and liquid crystals. Um, maybe uh, most of you are interested in photonic, uh, so uh, you know uh, many about uh, photonic effect, but I'm afraid that uh, uh, some of you are not so familiar with liquid crystal, so I want to introduce uh, what is liquid crystal. And the second lecture uh, is uh, I will introduce um, kinds of liquid crystal micro lasers. We can construct uh, various kinds of lasers uh, like uh, distributed feedback lasers and defect mode lasers and distributed black refractor lasers. Uh, so that is uh, today's lecture and uh, on Wednesday I will give uh, two lectures. The first one is the tunability of liquid crystal micro lasers. Since uh, liquid crystal is a fluidic medium, so we can tune uh, the uh, liquid crystal structure by applying uh, external stimuli. So we can tune the wavelengths and also the depolarization and direction. So I will I'll talk uh, some characteristic liquid crystal laser. And then uh, the final goal of liquid crystal is, of course, is, uh, continuous wave lasing. So towards this uh, goal, uh, we are trying to, not, not ourselves, but uh, many people are trying to uh, lower the threshold from the cavity structure or excitation method and uh, dye development uh, from many viewpoints. So I will introduce such kind of effort. Okay, that is the outline, all the outline. Um, so um, the first I will introduce photonic effect. Um, what is photonic effect? And some historical view of photonic effect. And some example of photonic effect. And uh, the, for the liquid crystal, I will uh, show you what a uh, liquid crystal and by introducing chirality we can introduce a uh, periodic structure in liquid crystal which is uh, very important for lasing work. So the, mainly I will talk about classic liquid crystal. Um, the, then um, I will talk the, some of the optical properties of uh, classic liquid crystal 
and um, the, some introduction of classic liquid crystal lasers, um, principal and historical viewpoint. Okay, that is the, the his first lecture. Okay, as you know, um, if you have a periodic structure uh, which has the uh, uh, the periodic uh, the layers of with uh, reflective index changes n one and n two, then if this uh, the thickness of these layer um, satisfy the black condition, uh, we have a reflection of light. So the black condition uh, is described by this way in such kind of system. Um, N1 is the refractive index of one layer, and N2 is the uh, refractive index of the other layer, and D1, D2 correspond to that thickness. Um, if uh, D1 and D2 are the same, and M is the, uh, the average of refractive indices of these, then uh, D, this thickness, is uh, about uh, the quarter of the wavelengths. So we have to construct uh, such a thin layer. So this is the uh, kind of one-dimensional uh, photonic crystal. Of course, we can construct a 2D or a 3D photonic crystals. Um, but um, in, in my talk, I confine the, um, the one-dimensional uh, photonic crystal. Okay, so this is a very um, primitive uh, <coughs> dispersion curve of photon and photon and electron. As you know, the uh, wavification uh, of light can be uh, uh, derived from the Maxwell equation. So it is well-known uh, wave equation. If you uh, think about the, this kind of harmonic wave, then uh, you can immediately get the relationship between omega and k, omega equals ck. So the dispersion relation, <coughs> namely the relationship between the angular frequency and the wave vector uh, is given by a straight line. And the slope is uh, the light velocity. So this is the dispersion in vacuum. And for the electron, in case of electron, um, of course, uh, we can describe uh, the electron motion uh, by a Schrodinger equation. Um, uh, the, uh, all of you must know the Schrodinger equation in free space. So there is no no uh, potential energy, just uh, the momentum. Uh, uh, then, um, if you use uh, the simple wave, then you have the relationship between the energy and k. So the energy of the electron is given by the square of k. So this is the story in, uh, without any periodic structure. But if you introduce a periodic structure like a photonic crystal uh, with, a uh, with a, the periodic periodicity of A, uh, this is A, uh, we can introduce a photonic gap like this. And um, in case of electron, the if you um, electron moves in the uh, the crystal, so the electron field, the periodic potential uh, given by the uh, the atoms. So um, they also um, so so by, by the such kind of uh, periodic structure, um, we can <coughs> we have uh, this kind of the energy 
get. So, so you know uh, very well about this. So the, the photonic gap in photon correspond to the energy gap in for electrons. So, um, so at the edge of the um, brillium zone, you have a photonic gap, the same as uh, in energy gap. So this is the story of the photonic gap. So what happens if we have uh, such kind of photonic gap? Um, of course, as I said, uh, the photonic gap appears at the edge of the Brillouin zone um, at k equal pi over a. A is the periodicity. Um, so this um, this is the Bragg condition, Bragg equation. So if the uh, incidence, now we are thinking about the, the normal incidence to the one-dimensional periodic structure. So theta equal 90. So the, this is just simplified to k equal uh, n pi over a. So that means the, uh, this is the first deflection bands. Yeah. And now in the uh, photonic gap, the uh, k uh, wave vector has the imaginary part in this region. So what happens if the k, k vector has an imaginary part is uh, like this. Um, electric field is given by uh, this simple equation. So if we write k um, by k real plus i k imaginary, then uh, you have the two terms. The, this real k gives a simple oscillation like this. However, because of this term, Uh, this um, the imaginary term gives the attenuation. So uh, the, the if light if the light propagate in this uh, wavelength region in this frequency region, then the electric field of light is always uh, damped like this. So if the thickness of sample is thick enough compared to the K imaginary, then uh, the light cannot pro pro propagate uh, if the wavelength is in this region. So this is uh, the one of the important um, the effect of the photonic uh, gap. <coughs> okay. So um, the another important thing is the group velocity. Um, maybe you know uh, that the group velocity is given by the, uh, the slope, the derivative of the omega by k. So the, the slope of this dispersion curve uh, corresponds to the group velocity. So the, here in this region, uh, the group velocity is uh, the almost constant. Uh, of course, there is uh, the, um, the wavelength dependence because of the uh, dispersion of refractive index. But um, besides this, uh, almost group velocity is almost constant. However, in the vicinity of the photonic band gap, um, particularly at this edge, the group velocity is zero. Okay. So the slope is zero. So that means the light at corresponding to this uh, photonic band edge is a stationary wave. Okay, light do not propagate. Uh, we have a stationary wave. What kind of stationary wave? Um, the, at the higher energy edge, the, um, the maximum amplitude correspond to the 
lower refractive index part. Okay, the, these are the photonic crystal, uh, refractive index, and low, high, low, high, and the, at this point, the maximum uh, amplitude corresponds to low refractive index. Uh, by contrast, um, at the lower energy edge, the, the maximum, maximum amplitude um, locates at the high refractive index. So this is the stationary way we have in photonic crystal. So we have um, many kinds of uh, effect. Um, as I already uh, told you, in this uh, frequency range, we have the deflection of light or confinement of light and attenuation of light in this range. Uh, however, um, even in the vicinity of this photonic band gap, uh, we have uh, many kinds of uh, photonic effect because of the anomalous uh, dispersion of refractive index. Okay. So uh, the group velocity changes drastically in this region, so the, that means the refractive index effectively changes. So what happens is, uh, so, so um, I, will, I will show you some example later. Um, this is the one of the historical the paper uh, by Yevoronovich, uh, which appeared in the Physical Review Letter in 1987. Uh, in this paper, uh, he mentioned about the defect mode lasing. So um, he introduced a defect here. So this region and this region, you have a periodic structure. However, here um, he introduced uh, the quarter wave phase strip here. So this is um, the, a kind of defect for the photonic effect, uh, like uh, the um, donor or acceptor in semiconductors. Okay. In, in case of uh, the electron dispersion relation, if you introduce a donor or acceptor uh, like uh, impurity, uh, then uh, we have a donor level or acceptor level within the, uh, the energy gap. The same things occurs if we introduce uh, such kind of uh, defect in the photonic crystal, then we have the uh, defect level in the photonic uh, band. And um, uh, this is a theoretical paper, but he showed uh, the lasing is possible by introducing such kind of uh, defect mode. And uh, later, uh, Dolin uh, also um, the suggested that the band edge lasing is possible. Um, the, uh, the photonic band edge lasing is also possible. So these papers are referred many, many times, particularly this one, uh, referred many times. So it's very important and uh, well-known uh, papers in this field. Okay, so um, the, to consider lasing, uh, the, one of the important parameters is the uh, density of state. Density of state is uh, the given defined by this equation. So this is um, the, actually the, uh, the uh, I mean inverse of slope. So um, here at the band edge, as I mentioned, um, the group velocity is almost zero. So that means uh, the density of state becomes maximum. Okay. And also by introducing the defect layer like this, then we have a defect level here. Here we also have a very high density of state. So in, in such uh, a wavelengths, we can uh, lens. 
So I will tell you the detail later. So um, this is the, the concept of photonic uh, crystal. Okay, I will show you um, the only two um, very interesting uh, phenomena, photonic effect. The one of them is uh, super prism effect using the photonic crystal. We have photonic crystal here. And then uh, suppose we input uh, the parallel beam with wavelengths 1 micrometer and 0.99 micrometers. Uh, in normal crystal, of course, uh, these beams go parallel to each other because the uh, dispersion of uh, refractive index is very small. So uh, for such kind of uh, the light with only a small uh, wavelength difference does not um, feel the uh, refractive index difference. So uh, it's almost go this way. However, in the photonic crystal, if the, these wavelengths is very close to the photonic gap, then the refractive index for this wave and this wave are very different. So the one of the beam goes this way and one of the beam goes this way. So the very large uh, the prism effect uh, can be obtained. It is uh, so-called super prism effect. This is one of the, um, the fascinating uh, the phenomenon in photonic crystal. Um, next one is um, the uh, work by uh, Professor Noda. Um, they, uh, they measure the fluorescence from the two-dimensional photonic crystal and uh, measure the decay, decay time of the fluorescence. And this is the intensity of fluorescence. Okay, so um, the fluorescence, uh, because the fluorescent light is confined in the two-dimensional photonic crystal, so the light cannot propagate parallel to this uh, surface. However, so they, uh, the light can go up because of the, the diffraction uh, by this uh, two-dimensional photonic crystal. Then um, they observe the, uh, the emission decay and uh, this corresponds, uh, this uh, green region corresponds to the photonic band gap. So if emission is located outside of the photonic gap, then uh, decay is fast. Uh, here also decays first. And emission intensity is small because the light propagates <coughs> towards uh, this uh, parallel direction. However, if the, the emission wavelengths sits in uh, the photonic uh, band gap, then the emission intensity increases because uh, the emission cannot propagate in frame, so the emission uh, come up normal to the uh, photonic crystal lattice. Then at the same time, uh, the decay time becomes uh, slower. So that means the uh, emission is confined by the, this uh, photonic crystal so that the transition probability is, is suppressed. So the decay time becomes longer. So this is uh, one of the um, uh, yeah, yeah, this is um, also important uh, data to show how the uh, emission light um, behaves in the photonic crystal. So these are the 
um, uh, I introduced uh, two um, important uh, phenomena in the photon crystal. And of course, the, if we consider uh, two or three dimensional uh, liquid, uh, two dimensional photonic crystal, the uh, situation is much, much uh, complicated. Um, as you know, in the um, energy band, in the energy gap, uh, the dispersion uh, is different. Uh, depending on the direction of the lattice. So this is the, one of the dispersion relation of triangular lattice or air currents like this. And in this case, uh, we have the, the region uh, in which no dispersion curve exists. So that means uh, here is a complete photonic band gap. To any direction, light cannot pro propagate. And that kind of thing is possible in three-dimensional photonic crystal. That, um, there are only a few examples. Uh, the one of them is uh, um, Leblonovich, the so-called Leblonovich lattice. Um, in such a case, uh, the light is truly confined in the photonic crystal. So light cannot propagate any direction. So confinement is perfect. So that, in that case, uh, we call it a complete photonic band gap. OK, okay so um, these are the just a brief introduction of photonic effect. And now I'm going to. Uh, tell you what uh, liquid crystal. Um, how many people know liquid crystal? Oh, okay. So you uh, you could you already saw uh, liquid crystal. Oh, okay. So uh, so um, I so it's not uh, necessary to show this, but um, yeah, I have. <laughs> Video. Okay, so um, here is a liquid crystal. Uh, this is turbid and fluid. And by heating, you see uh, the, this medium uh, turns to uh, transparent. So now we have a liquid state. And if you um, be cool the material, then uh, the turbidity slowly appears. Now the uh, phase transition from the isotropic to liquid crystal occurs. So turbidity. Uh, comes from the, uh, the long-range fractation of a molecular orientation. So this is liquid crystal. Okay, so you you know um, most of you know liquid crystal. So um, I, I just uh, briefly uh, tell you what is liquid crystal. And of course, um, all of you know uh, there are three phases in matter. And gas and liquid and crystal. And uh, gas and liquid uh, confine, uh, I mean, differentiate by density. Uh, for instance, in case of water, uh, it, when it evaporates, then uh, the, the volume uh, increases uh, by three order of magnitude, thousand times. So uh, the, normally, the, we can differentiate gas state and liquid state by density. And uh, between liquid and crystal, um, of course, the one of the important difference is the fluidity. Uh, liquid, it's fluid, but uh, crystal, uh, it's not. 
um, fluid. But if we uh, differentiate uh, liquid and crystal only by fluidity, uh, there are no chance for liquid crystal to emerge. So the important uh, physical quantity is symmetry. Okay. So in case of liquid crystal, it's uh, total symmetry. So any rotation or any mirror uh, by any symmetry operation is possible. So the total symmetry because molecules are randomly oriented and moving around. But uh, the liquid, uh, sorry, crystal, um, the, you have a uh, finite number of symmetry operations. So the crystal has a lower symmetry than liquid. And, okay, now this is the pneumatic liquid crystal. It's the molecule, uh, the line parallel to each other and moving around. So uh, the, from the symmetry viewpoint, it is like crystal. It's an isotope. Uh, liquid crystal has an isotope. However, uh, this is fluid, so it is like liquid. So the liquid crystal has both property of fluidity and low symmetry. So the both property of li liquid and crystal. Um, there are no positional order and uh, orientational order. So that is, this is the liquid crystal. Um, particularly, pneumatic liquid crystal is used for display application, as you know. And uh, we have the many types of uh, liquid crystal. The one of them is a symmetric liquid crystal. In this case, uh, there are the layer structure so that uh, the, there is a one-dimensional positional order in addition to the orientation order. So this is uh, more close to crystal. Um, so uh, this is uh, pneumatic and symmetric. And if we introduce a kind of molecule to this kind of system, then uh, the chiral structure appears. Chiral means the helical structure in these cases. So there are um, many types of uh, the helical structure in liquid crystal. Uh, the one of the most important helical structure is the crustic liquid crystal, crust, uh, crustic phase. Um, this is the main actor uh, in my talk. So the, the molecule, uh, this is the average molecular direction called director. So the director changes um, to form the helical structures. And uh, this, this is the periodic um, the period, it's a half pitch. And uh, if this pitch corresponds to the visible wavelengths, then uh, we can say this is a photonic crystal. And even in tilted symmetric phase, the tilt direction precesses from layer to layer, so uh, we have another type of helical structure. And some others, and even uh, the symmetric layer itself twist. Uh, this is a twist grain boundary phase. Um, also, there is uh, the three-dimensional uh, periodic structure, uh, which is called blue phase. Blue phase is a kind of three-dimensional helical structure of crystal liquid crystal. So the molecule twists along this direction and this direction and any direction. So which forms uh, this kind of three-dimensional uh, crystal structure. Um, there are three blue, blue phase, blue phase 
2 and blue phase 1, uh, which has the simple cubic and uh, DCC body center cubic structure. And uh, there are another blue phase 3 that has uh, amorphous uh, phase. So in this way, there are many types of uh, periodic structure in liquid crystal. So we can say uh, liquid crystal molecules spontaneously form a one-dimensional or three-dimensional photonic structures. So as I said at the beginning, uh, to make uh, the photonic crystal, we have to fabricate a very precise uh, the periodic structure like uh, uh, photo, uh, the photo of wave, wavelengths. But however, in liquid crystal, uh, they form spontaneously uh, the periodic structure. That is the, one of the important points. Okay, so um, uh, most of the time I talk uh, the classic liquid crystal. So um, I will explain the most important optical property of classic liquid crystal. Um, suppose we have a right handed helical structure like this. Um, if we input a uh, left-handed circularly polarized light uh, that is opposite to the handedness of the helical structure, then it's just go through. But by introducing uh, the right-handed circularly polarized light, this is totally reflect back if the black condition is satisfied. So this is um, reflection selectively occurs uh, depending on the um, handedness of the circularly polarized light. So this is called uh, selective reflection. Okay, this is uh, one of the um, the comparison uh, for liquid uh, sorry uh, classic liquid crystal reflection and uh, the theoretical calculation. Um, the comparison was made by Italian scientists and um, experiment is ours. So we measure uh, this kind of experimental reflection uh, for left-handed circularly polarized light and uh, right-handed circularly polarized light. What I want to say is the uh, the agreement between uh, the experiment and uh, theory are uh, quite good. So that means uh, liquid crystal is a fluidic medium. However, the structure is very uh, strictly uh, defined, so well-defined structures, uh, although the molecule are fractured. So um, this is the Reflection bands of classic liquid crystal. Excuse me, were those uh, numerical or analytic um, theoretical? Uh, this is the, um, for, in this case, um, we, we use uh, the oblique instance of light. In this case, uh, the analytical uh, equation is not possible. For the uh, normal instance, we have an analytical. The, the important thing is uh, the, this uh, total reflection path. Um, as I said, for normal instance, the left hand is, is totally reflected, but this is uh, the other circular polarization we just transmit. However, by using the oblique instance, uh, we have such kind of total reflection path. So um, this is just to show. Okay. So um, the one of the interesting facts is the uh, beetle. Beetle has uh, their skins made of classic liquid crystal structure. Um, this is the beetle. Um, if we see um, by using the left-handed circular polarized light, the uh, reflection color, uh, we can observe the reflection color. However, if we use a right-handed circular polarized light, 
Um, this is like a cockroach. Uh -huh. What type of beetle is that? Uh, well, many, many kinds of beetle, uh, not all of them, but uh, many kinds of beetle has uh, left-handed uh, classic liquid crystals too. So, um, I will uh, tell you another kind of uh, beetle later. But, um, this is a video. <coughs> um, so, if we use uh, right handed circular uh, polarizer, you cannot see, but from the left handed circular polarizer, you see the reflection of color. So, when the um, the at the beginning of the beetle was born, and then uh, the uh, first uh, the crustic liquid crystal structure is formed, and uh, it is uh, fixed. And and um, it is true that uh, the all the the beetle has uh, left-handed structure or uh, left-handed helical structure. Is there any benefit in the nature to get left-handed structural? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I will um, show you uh, the beetle which reflect both right and left. That has some, the, some advantage to uh, prevent the light. So it is uh, the uh, that beetle lives in a desert, so uh, strong sunlight is reflected back by this. Uh, structure. This is one of the But uh, I do not know uh, the normal beetle. Um, but um, of course, not all of them. But uh, the, some scientists visited the British Museum and checked the, all the beetles. <laughs> and uh, the, if they have uh, left handed, uh, well, um, classic structure, all of them are left-handed. I do not know why. <laughs> okay, so... Um, oh, there's another video um, to show uh, the helical... helical pitch of the... helical pitch can be tuned by external stimuli of the cell. So, cholesterol helical pitch is very sensitive to the temperature. So, it is uh, the sheet of cholesterol liquid crystal. Uh, actually, um, this sheet contains the, um, the capsule of uh, cholesterol liquid crystal. So, the by heating, by uh, body temperature, then uh, the crustic liquid crystal sheet can uh, show uh, this kind of image. So, uh, helical pitch, uh, as I said before, the um, selective reflection occurs um, due to the black reflection. So, the helical pitch changes, then uh, the color changes. So. Um, this part, um, it becomes blue, like this. Okay. Um, what time do I have? I don't remember what time I started. Oh, this is the time for some five minutes break. Okay. okay. So, um, so finally, I want to. Um, <coughs> Uh, mentioned about the principle of uh, amazing device using the classic liquid crystal. So I already uh, told you uh, the optical property, selective reflection. So the next thing is the, if we dope the classic liquid crystal with laser dye and excite uh, outside, then the emission from these dyes are confined in this uh, crystal structure. 
if you input the light from outside, it is reflected. So if light comes from inside, then the, um, if the wavelength is satisfied with the black condition, then the light cannot come out. So um, the light confinement is possible. So without, without any mirror. So cholestic liquid crystal itself acts as a mirror, distributed feedback mirror. So then um, the like this. So at the edge, at the edge of the um, the photonic band, this is a photonic band. So reflection loss. Um, you you see a lazy occurs at the edge of the uh, photonic band. So this is the most simple uh, distributed feedback cavity laser uh, using crystal liquid crystal. Um, that was first reported by uh, this, uh, this scientist in 1980, uh, distributed feedback lasing in crystal liquid crystal. They show uh, this kind of very primitive data, but um, the uh, COPS, he, this paper is uh, well referred by many people. Um, the, he actually showed uh, low threshold distributed feedback blazing in classic liquid crystal in 1998. Um, about uh, this time, many people stopped to use uh, liquid crystal for lasers. And um, also, Yang et al. Uh, reported the defect mode blazing in cholesterol liquid crystal. Um, uh, this is a theoretical uh, paper. Um, so I, I will tell you uh, this uh, result uh, in the next lecture. So uh, I, I will show you just one or two uh, figures. This is from a three-dimensional photonic crystal, uh, blue face. Uh, so lazing also occurs. And since uh, liquid crystal, if we uh, polymerize, a liquid crystal can uh, be a uh, freestanding film. So just like uh, this kind of film, um, we can lace, and by bending, the, this kind of self-focusing uh, occurs. So this is from the work by uh, Ozaki. So these um, are the um, typical the classic liquid crystal or liquid crystal lasers. So okay. So so this is I think uh, this is all this time. Thank you for your attention.